Hey, Glory, it's a great night in the kingdom of God. Welcome here to uh, Business Breakthrough. And uh, this is our fourth Monday of the month. And uh, what that means is the fourth Monday of every month, we uh, dedicate that to what we're calling business development. And tonight we have a, just a, a phenomenal, maybe, maybe, it's just, maybe that's not a good word, phenomenal. Awesome. Man awesome. of God. <laughs> I'd like everybody to welcome here uh, Mr. David Curran, who's right in the middle there. And then, uh, for unless you're new, over on the uh, far right of your screen, assuming your screen looks like my screen, we have uh, Raquel Soto. And uh, she's serving as a co host with me. And uh, I'm going to come back to her and give her a chance to say hi in a moment and a little bit about why she's here. But first off, uh, we're going to give our guest tonight a chance to uh, introduce himself a little bit, and who he is, what he, what he, who, what he does, and uh, about a minute or two here, David, as an introduction. Uh, better you do it than me try to introduce you. But uh, let, me, let me just say this. I met David, gosh, maybe five months ago now. I think it was around April, as I remember, maybe four months. But... Uh, uh, in any event, the uh, spring of this year, we met for the very first time, and and uh, there was just one of those uh, divine connections that, uh, you know, we belong together. I'm not sure why yet, but we got some ideas, but this is certainly one of the uh, one of the purposes that God has for us. But uh, David works with a group called Sandler Training. Uh, he'll, he can say more about that, but um, June, was it June or July, you had an event you invited me to? I think it was in July. In July. Yeah, I think and, so. Uh, it, it was just, oh my, it was one of those life-changing events. You know, it, it takes a lot when you're 70 years old, been around the, the block for 50 years in business, to hear something that you feel was fresh and vital and valuable, but the entire day was exactly that. And uh, I'm confident tonight's going to be the same for all of us. But uh, and let me uh, introduce to you the great... David Curran. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. And hello, Raquel. Good to have you here. And welcome, everybody who's watching online. It's good to have you here. It's good to be here. I appreciate the invitation very much. Uh, tonight is about a subject that's very close to my heart, and that is about those dreams that the Lord puts in us that we want to have come out of us. So um, you mentioned it earlier, Dave, but I'm with a company called Sandler Training. Sandler Training's got about 285 offices all over the world. It's the largest leadership management, sales training, and customer service training organization on the planet. But we work in the background. We work with the guts and the behaviors, the attitudes that you need to change. And with that, that's one of the biggest challenges most of us have. Little background on me. I spent uh, 25 years working in business in Southern California, worked for a a medium-sized company where I ran the company for a number of years. We tripled the size of the company. When the owner sold it, I opened my own business, and I got invited to come out to the land of Oklahoma. Woo! And that's it. Uh, <laughs> that's my <Oklahoma>. dad. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not what I did. I said, I'm not going to Oklahoma, and I'm not going to go work at a college. And I, uh, uh, the, the person who had invited me said, well, David, would you pray about that? I think you're supposed to do this. And I said, well, I'll pray about it, but I'm not going to go to Oklahoma. And uh, 90 days later, that's how fast God works when he wants you to do something. We were here. And uh, my whole career has been built on two things. First is developing revenue. The second thing is, is developing people. And early on in that mission with the university, I started working with a company called Sandler Training, who I work for now, and found it just incredibly impactful to not have to take four or five or six years to go to school and then four or five or six years in the workplace to actually get a money on your return of your investment for your growth. And so that's what we do here. We help people who have a commitment and a desire. Really, m pretty much everybody I meet has got a pretty good desire to grow. Wouldn't you say, Dave? I mean, we talk to somebody that's out there, they want to grow. Yeah. But it takes more than that. It takes a commitment. And in my world, what I've discovered is it also typically takes a system. It's not just waking up every day and winging it. And what we're going to talk about today is something that is it was completely elusive to me, uh, the way we're going to approach it today. 
in the past because I really did not understand how to put the pieces together. But maybe we'll get to that to a second. Dave, do you have some more things that you want to talk about before we get up and going? Uh, yes, I want to just uh, encourage everybody to uh, mark their calendars here for the uh, next two Mondays. But the uh, next Monday, of course, is Labor Day. But uh, what we're doing a business breakthrough is we, we've broken the month into first, second, third, and fourth Mondays. Now, I did discover we have uh, five Sundays, five Sundays, five Mondays in October and then December again. So uh, you know, praying about what to do on that uh, fifth Monday of uh, those months. But the first Monday of every month is introduction to business breakthrough. And uh, that's going to be next Monday. It's going to be, again, on Labor Day. And what we do on that introduction is give people a little bit of background, orientation, understanding what Business Breakthrough is all about. And then we have our guest speakers for the month, um, which in uh, September, um, before I go there, let me finish this, then I'll tell you what the speakers so, but we're going to have special speakers next Monday night as well. But then uh, on Tuesday, the second Tuesday, the uh, second Monday of every month is the single most important business breakthrough event of the month. And uh, that is where we lay the foundation or that we started uh, 27, 28, well, 27 years ago for sure, probably close to 28 years. But uh, what God showed me back in uh, 1990 is the significance of teaching people how to operate their uh, their business in the supernatural. And uh, we need to understand how to apply, utilize, benefit from the gifts of the Spirit and walking in the Spirit, walking in, 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 in the wisdom of God and, and how to uh, apply s spiritual principles to help you make more money. And one of the things that God told me, and we'll talk about this next Monday night, is that we have to think big. And so often we limit God by uh, the level of our vision. But what's most important is, as a person in business that has a heart to make money, you are as much in the ministry as I am traveling the world. And because of that, the devil attacks you. And what God showed me is what's really, really important is setting up a system of praying for business people. So what happens on the second Monday of every month is first and foremost, a teaching to help you to understand how to operate your business in the supernatural. Then at the end of that teaching session, we direct everybody to a prayer form, which, by the way, those that are in the program already, that, program, that, 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 that form is being updated, and it's going to be easier, better. We have a whole new form generator. But anyway, we go to a, uh, a page where you will list for your business your 30-day objectives. What do you want to see accomplished in the next 30 days and then the next six months and then one-year objectives? And this is valuable from the perspective of just doing that, uh, that exercise is valuable that you write something down in terms of a vision and the goal. But then what happens is over the next few days, we take all those forms and we put people into groups of three. And uh, then those three individuals communicate with each other. Uh, they, they have a time through a free conferencing phone call or a Skype call, whatever different ways that they connect, but the point is the three, we have groups of three. This month we had uh, eight groups of three, 24 people that were connected. So we have eight groups and each one of those groups has three people and they pray for each other and they agree to pray for each other every day for just two minutes a day. It doesn't sound like much, but I tell you what, 27 years of history tells me that if you have two people praying for you, two minutes a day, you will be amazed because it's not just prayer, it's focused prayer into your specific objectives. You're going to see uh, more sales, you'll see less, uh, less uh, chaos, 
that the devil's causing, less uh, contracts that are lost, monies that are lost. I'm telling you, when you get God involved, you're going to make a whole bunch more money, and that's what it's all about. So you have more opportunity in your ministry of giving to do what God's given you to do. So anyway, uh, the second Monday of every month, that's what we do, and that's the most important Monday of the month. Third Monday of the month, we have a guest come in that will help people that are looking for a business with an idea. Now, last week we had Dr. David Asher share about the uh, hemp oil, one of the hottest products on the planet right now. And uh, that that video, I've been out of town all week, so I didn't get a chance to put it up on the website, but that, uh, that video will be up on our website here, uh, hopefully before this week is over. But he shared a tremendous, uh, uh, opportunity for people that are looking for an opportunity as well as a great product for everybody. But uh, this month we have uh, uh, Karen Knott is going to be sharing with us on the third Monday. She works with a company called Geo Wellness. And I've worked with this company back in 2007. And they have a, a whole line of products. But uh, one, one of their line that I, I'm, I'm just such a believer in is technology to protect you from dangerous Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. They have different products. And uh, so anyway, she is going to be sharing on the third Monday, and she will be our guest, that's our dimension, next Monday. She'll be sharing for about five minutes, and she told me that she's actually going to have, uh, I believe, the, the president and the vice president of Gia Wellness, and they're a major, major corporation, but they're going to be on uh, with her on, on, on the webinar for that Wednesday night, I'm sorry, Wednesday night, for that Monday night, third third Monday. Then uh, on the fourth Monday, again, of September, we're going to do another business development. And the person doing that business development is looking at you right now. This yeah, girl. Raquel. <laughs> yes. And uh, she is a dynamic uh, teacher, leader, uh, we don't have time to, to get into her story tonight, but uh, she will be sharing uh, for five minutes or so next Monday night, giving you an idea uh, about what her, what her Monday is going to be, the fourth Monday of September. So that's the plan. That's what Business Breakthrough is all about. And without taking any more time here, we're going to jump right into tonight's uh, uh, teaching. I uh, almost said sermon, but, you know, it's not a sermon per se. But uh, David is a great man of God. And by the way, he is doing an incredible number of great things in ministry. Uh, you might just mention, David, what, what, just real quickly, all the things you're involved in. But now here, as he gets started, there is a chat window and uh, on the right side of your screen. And uh, you can say hi one to another, greet one another. Oh, that's wonderful. But one of the things that uh, Raquel is going to be doing is uh, monitoring that chat. And if you have a question, she will bring it to Dave's attention. Now, what you want to do is if you have a question while he's teaching that is relevant to something he just said, uh, then you know you can type that question in. And if we don't get too many that we get bogged down, uh, Raquel will say, David, we got a question, and he'll respond to it. Now, if you have a general question uh, relative to something not specific to something he just said, uh, we'll do that at the end of the session. So uh, uh, I think is that clear enough there, Raquel? It's, it's clear, yes. Just, okay. Uh, let's so David, go ahead a quick and talk question. in the chat when you can. Go ahead. So I jumped on in there, but David, quick question. Can you walk through for the folks that are online how to download the PDFs so that they can have the worksheets if they want to do that, they can pull those off? Okay, well, why don't you go ahead and uh, put it up there okay. and uh, then they'll know. So what's going to happen here is David has two handouts for you. And uh, what we did is combine them into one so that you can get them both at the same time. There's six pages here. And uh, what you want to do is it's a PDF file. 
So in just a moment, that PDF file will show up on your screen as being available to download. And uh, so the idea, David, they have that as a worksheet while you're going through, is that the idea? Yeah, it's something that they'll be able to use because this is really going to be, we're going to do an overview, but they're going to come back through and have the opportunity to use this as a tool to work through the changes that they personally want to be able to make as a result of what they hear. So okay. I'm going to take them through the PDF. You guys will see this up online as we go through it, but so that you can actually take the time to work through it. This is not something that's going to be a, a two minute deal. This is something that will require some heart and some time and some um, reflective thought to really kind of take advantage of. So you should have that now available. If you look on your screen on the right hand side, uh, three icons up uh, on the, the blue uh, tab area, there's something that looks like a paper with a folded edge. If you click that, you should be able to see converting dreams to reality. And that'll give you a series of six uh, pages that we're gonna go through. So before we kind of get started in that, let me let you kind of know what we're gonna get into. We'll start with a little bit of an overview about the way that we receive information. We'll walk through some of the things that limit us. We'll th walk through the ways that we actually learn as human beings. We'll talk about our beliefs and how much that affects how we're able to move forward. And then we'll work through a systemized step-by-step -step process, to figure out how do I take my dreams and move them into the daily actions and behaviors I need to do so I can make that a reality. Can David, I'll pause you a second. Pause you a second. Raquel, did it show up for you? It did not show up for me. Okay, so it's showing here. I'll hit the preview button. Let me hit the share file button. There, there it went. Oh, uh, okay. there we go. Yep. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay, Thanks now, for asking. <laughs> okay, well, good. I'm going to downsize Raquel and I, so you're going to have full screen here, David. Raquel, anything you want to add quickly to we? Before we oh, officially start? No, we're good. We bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus. We know that what's coming for you um, right now that is going to be shared is going to be impactful. It's going to give you the answers that you've been seeking. The answers are already inside you. And David's going to help pull that out of you through the help of the Holy Spirit. So we bless David in Jesus' name. Go ahead and flow, brother. Woo! And, All right. God bless you. Thank you, Raquel, for that. Appreciate it. All right, here we go. Whoops. <laughs> I pushed the wrong button. You look good, Raquel, there. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So a couple of things I want you to do. If you've got something to write with, I'm going to strongly suggest that you take some notes, uh, whether that's printing them out on the PDFs that I've sent out to you or you've just got a notebook in your hands. I want you to take some notes as we go through this. It'll help you to be able to absorb the information. What I want you to do at first is write down three, three words three words. The first one is embrace. Embrace. The second one is blend. Blend. The last one is defend. Defend. When you hear new information like this, there's only three things that we can do with information we get. We're bombarded all day long by tons of information that comes to us. So we can embrace it. We can say, boy, that just sounds like it's true. My life experience confirms that with me. It must be true. We can take it in or we can blend it. We can say, I can kind of go for a little bit of that, but I don't know about all of it. I'll take some of it and I'll blend it together. Or the last thing that we can do is that we can defend against the new information. Now, if those three words, embrace <laughs> and defend, what do you think happens most of the time? Most of the bend. time, defend, you bet, exactly. So as we go through this, I want you to think of three different examples for you personally, because we're trying to learn, we've got to have to cover some, some of the things that might be barriers to us actually being able to communicate or take in some new information. So think about this. If you've got a prospect in front of you and you're beginning to talk to them and you see them step back a little bit and their mouth tightens a little bit and you recognize that they've gone into defend mode, it happens all the time with us. Or maybe you've got an employee Maybe three common places that this occurs with a prospect that defend with an employee. You've got employees say, hey, I want to show you how to do this. This is a better way to do it. Let me lead you and show you so you can get better results. But for something inside of them kicked up and they're in defend mode. And they may be listening. They may even be nodding, but they're not going to be doing because they're defending against whatever you've talked to them about. Mm -hmm. but here's the most dangerous. 
The most dangerous place is when I have the opportunity to learn as a leader, because what I do affects everything in my business. It affects the businesses that I engage with. So my capacity to hear new information and to assimilate it is a huge difference. If I defend from the information that can help me, it can slow me down. And part of this process is just being aware. As you go through our process today, we talk about a few things. Be aware, let the shoulders down a little bit, open the ears a little bit, and just be open to what God might say to you as we kind of travel down this path together. Fair request? Good. So we are talking about converting our dreams into reality, converting our dreams into reality. I'm going to walk you through six separate sheets and some different concepts. The first few are going to be about how we learn, so we can kind of navigate that and open our minds to maybe be a little more receptive than we normally would be. And the last three are going to be just exercises. We can really begin to think how this works. There's not a quick fix for this. There's no magic pill that says, hey, I'm going to be able to do everything I need to do tonight. But this has been an extraordinarily helpful exercise. The part I'm presenting for you today is part of a eight-hour workshop that we do that's $1,000 in our training center. I'm going to take just the, just the cream of the crop of that to pass along to you as kind of the, the top of your ice cream sundae. And as we do that, I'll give you the tools to go deeper and go further if you want to, if it's important for you to make that change. Fair? Fair. All right. Thanks, Raquel. So I'm going to turn on the screen share. I'm going to pull in a uh, PDF for us to take a look at. Up on the screen, as you guys look at this, this is a way we can identify something. I want you to take just a few minutes, not even a few minutes. We'll take 30 seconds. If you've got a notepad there, and even if you don't, think about the things in your life that you want. Think about them in the business sense. Maybe you can even add the personal sense. Two or three things that you want that you don't have right now, that you don't have right now. And if you've got the sheet printed out and you want to jot them down there, great. You can use this again later to kind of think through this exercise. Just jot down some of those things you want. And I'll be offline for just a couple of seconds while you think what's important to you. Nobody's looking at this. Nobody's judging you on it. It's just the things that are important to you that you would like. Now, in the center of that page, there's a big circle. We're going to describe what that is in just a second. Whatever you've thought of, whatever you've written down, more likely than not, somebody else already has that item or has that relationship. They have that in their life. And the reason that we don't have it today is because it's outside of our comfort zone. If I look in that little circle right there, I want you to write, comfort zone because a comfort zone is a barrier for us and it's our comfort zone because it's the things that we do if 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 those things that were on the wants side were inside your comfort zone you would have those things so in order for me to grow i have to recognize i'm going to have to stretch past what's normally comfortable for me i'm gonna have to stretch past those things there are forces on the outside holding me back There are forces on me internally holding me back, keeping me in that comfort zone. How do I expand past that? I'm going to talk to you about the way that we do that. So I'm going to turn off the screen share. I'm going to kick on the board here and have you fill out a few things here as we go through. Dave, could you expand that screen for us so we can see? Thank you, my friend. Yeah, I'm on it. Yeah, I've got it. It's perfect. On that place where it says growth, it says growth up on your screen right there. There's one through five up there at the top. I want you to write these letters down, A-K-A-S-H. This is an acronym, ACASH, ACASH, and this is the process by which we learn. And the reason I want you to think about this is because I have to understand, A, some of the things that are maybe blocking me, information I'm defending against, but then I also have to understand how do I actually apply myself and move forward to grow to become this person that, I believe I can be that God wants me to be as I move forward. 
The first A stands for the word awareness. Awareness. The reality is I'm not going to, to add energy into changing something if I am not aware that there's an issue or problem, an obstacle, or that there's not something that I truly want. I'm not going to do it. And many of us, all of us, have blind spots. And those blind spots are dangerous places in our lives sometimes. So I've got to be aware. The Holy Spirit's a fabulous teacher in this, pulling up those things that are causing us to do self-limiting behaviors, which we'll get to in just a second. But if I'm aware, that's the first step in growth. The next step is if I am aware that I need to do something to grow, I'm going to seek knowledge. The next step is knowledge, awareness and knowledge. Maybe that's a book. Maybe that's watching this show. Maybe that's listening to a podcast. What are you doing actively to gain knowledge? Here's the challenge. Most of us, that's where it stops. You could put a brick wall right there. And here's why. The next step is application. And when you try something for the first time that you've never done before, how well does that go? It usually goes terribly wrong because <laughs> we've never done it before, whether it's skiing down a hill or speaking in front of people. Whatever it is, it's usually a very uncomfortable place for us to be at. Application. If I endure, if I go past the place that's out of my comfort zone, which this is where it busts through, I'm going to get a skill. The S stands for skill. And if I continue to do that and I repeat it, I'm going to get a habit. And a habit is an absolutely beautiful thing that God has built into us so that we can build ourselves into people that do the right thing for the right reasons at the right time in an ongoing basis. By default, by lack of energy, can take habits into a bad place. But a habit was designed to support us. So we'd have to spend all of our energy doing that. It frees up our minds, just like when you drive. You think about driving. How many of you have got the habit where you just back out and you hit the, maybe you recognize this, you've driven a little bit and you wondered if you actually closed the garage door. If you hit the button to close the garage door in your house and you turn around and you kind of go back and it's almost always closed. Because you have the habit of doing that. Or have you ever done this? You ever gone through a, a light and you're not sure you can't remember if it was red or if it was yellow or green? You can't even remember? It's because you have a habit. Your subconscious is in control. And you run through it, it's probably green. But we were thinking about something else. A habit allows me to free up some hard drive space to be able to grow. If you go down a little bit further on your page there, it's got some things that says limits. Limits. I want you to take a look down there. I'm going to pull that back up on the screen here for just a moment. Maybe I won't. Let's go here. There we go. So down here, it says limits. There are four limiters and only four that limit us. The first one, Fear. So on that line one, write down the word fear. Second one, apathy. Now fear is pretty obvious. Most of us realize that there are things that are outside of our comfort zone that scare us, that hit our security buttons, and fear limits us from taking risks. But apathy also does the same thing. Apathy is just not that big a deal. I'm not going to worry about it. I don't really care about it. We, we just don't care. We don't notice and it limits our growth. The third thing is ignorance. Ignorance is we just don't know what we just don't know. Incredibly dangerous, but we don't know this dangerous because we just don't know what we don't know. And now, as you think about these words, you probably think of somebody that comes to mind. The last one, and for me personally, probably the one that was the toughest, is ego. Ego is the thing that happens when it sneaks up on you because you didn't think you had one. And it's what blocks you from being able to grow blocks you from being able to grow. There's some great rules on the bottom of this page. You can't accomplish anything great by playing it safe. A life without risk is a life without growth. 
you are either part of your plan or part of somebody else's. And my favorite one, which I hated at first, is that you have to learn to fail to win. That application stage of behavioral change, you're gonna fail. But you have to learn to fail forward to win. Great rule. Next one here, maybe you guys have heard of this concept before. I'm not a big fan of the crystal ball, but I do wanna to talk to you about this idea of self-fulfilling prophecy. And there's some blank space up here to be able to write. I'm gonna go back to the whiteboard and show you something, but I want you to think about this. This is when you believe something is true and then you act in a way that makes it true. For example, you think that you can't and you prove that you can't by the actions that you take. So let's jump back on here. I'm gonna turn off the screen share. You know, David, <clears throat> real quickly, just a thought, most people probably, uh, aren't able to write on the form because even if they downloaded them, they, they couldn't print them in time. It's true. Yes. What's your thought there? Well, just take notes. Yeah. So at the very beginning, and hopefully I said that, and if I did not, I do apologize, gang. If you've got something to write on, highly suggest that you take notes because this is not on any of the materials that I sent to you. This is something that we call the belief wheel. Dave, any other thoughts on that or? Yeah, just real quickly, because sometimes people get lost in notes, uh, taking notes, but, and, and I think it's valuable to take notes, but this is being recorded and will mm -hmm. be available for replay. Thank you, Dave, super helpful. So I want you to draw something that's going to look like a clock. So on the empty space on your paper that you've got in front of you, at the top at 12 o'clock, I want you to write the word beliefs beliefs. At the three o'clock spot, when you draw a little arrow down here, I want you to write the word judgments. Judgments. Down here at the bottom at the six o'clock spot, I want you to write two words. I want you to write action. I want you to write non-action. Up here at nine o'clock, write the word results. And then that completes our clock up to belief. We call this the belief wheel. And here's what happens. We have beliefs that are inside of us. They're from our childhood. They're part of our hard wiring they're for a thousand different reasons. Some are from hurts. Some are from gains. There's things that we believe inside of us. And those beliefs cause us to make judgments. Those judgments cause us to have action or non-action. They cause results that cause reinforcement of our beliefs. So if I've got a small business and I believe that the owner of a large company that's near me wouldn't spend the time to talk to me about my business, I'm going to make a judgment that he's too big of a player for me to go visit with. Because of that, I'm going to take no action, to actually meet with them, which is going to mean I'm not going to get any results. That means my results are going to reinforce my beliefs that it doesn't work. And that's a self-perpetuating cycle. If I believe that it doesn't work to make cold calls for my business, I'm going to make a judgment not to make any cold calls. I'm going to have no action toward cold calls to connect with people, which means I'm going to get a result that they don't work, which will reinforce my beliefs. And positive or negative, this works all the way around. And we do this to ourselves all the time. We put ourselves on this belief wheel and because ahead of time, we've already decided, we pre-decided the outcome subconsciously, not on purpose, not, not in some cruel way, but subconsciously, we decided we can't or we can't. Both are true. This is a big component for me being able to move forward. We're going to go to the next page that I sent out to you guys. If you've got that, if you can, I'm going to bring it up on the screen right now. Again, it's there for you to be able to print. And as Dave said, it'll be available when you watch later on as well. So that's your self-fulfilling prophecy. I'm going to be a little careful how that moves us forward or not. What we're going to do right now is we're going to go through a system. A system. One of the biggest challenges for us is when we get into this place of dreams and hopes and a very vulnerable stage of, my ultimate life looks like this. 
when the reality is in the fallen world, I'm not experiencing those things. The gap between where we are and where we want to be will be filled with pain. If you're a note taker and you're writing this down, write this one down. All the world's frustrations and disappointments, all the world's frustrations and disappointments are from unmet expectations, from unmet expectations. Whether they're subconscious or I've put them out there, they're not being met and I'm disappointed. And that disappointment year after year after year as we grow causes us to repress those things. You think about being a child. As a child, I've got dreams. I'm playing in this beautiful tapestry of our imagination that we've been given by God to create. I want you to stop and just think, and in the room that you're in right now, wherever you're watching from, I want you to look up and I want you to look at the wall. You look at a picture that's on your wall. Maybe the window or the ceiling. You should look at the paint. Or maybe there's a wall covering that's there. The desk that you're sitting near or the chair. Everything that surrounds you as you're watching this right now and the device that you're seeing on it's created in the imagination of the tapestry of somebody's imagination. It was woven together before it began to appear. It was somebody else's dream. And all of us have things like that, that are dreams here that need to work their way out. So we're going to talk about that. Before we go too far, since we start with dreams, and that's the first portion of this, I'm going to share with you a quick story. In Southern California in 1992, I went to my first Zig Ziglar seminar. Uh, I think I loaded up with about $300 worth of tapes and treasures and came home with a workbook. In the workbook, it had the first three pages were in there. It said, everything you want to be. Next one said, everything you want to do. Last one said, I'm going to be a great father. I want to be a good husband. I want to be athletic. I want to take care of my body. I want to be a good employee. I want to be a good employer. I want to be whatever it is I want it to be. Brave, strong. With a list of the, the integrity types of subject that belong to you. What are they for you? I sat there with my pen in that book for 30 minutes. Frozen. And I found that I'm not the only person that's experienced this over the years. An entire year, I never wrote anything on any of those pages. And the reason was, is I felt like I would be, if I wrote it down, it didn't come true, it would make my life a lie. I couldn't put it down and it didn't come true. And I didn't know if it was going to come true because it was a dream. Many of the people we visit with, struggle greatly with this part because those dreams are intimate inside of us. Getting them out is scary because what if they don't come true? The way that they don't come true is they stay inside of you. Most dreams die because of fear, not because of failure. Most dreams die because of fear, not because of failure. So our steps on this is to take those dreams Pull them in. We have something in Southern California where I'm from next to Disneyland. They have the Imagineering, Disney Imagineering there. They have a term called blue sky. Blue sky is this playful way of saying, it doesn't matter if it comes true or not. Let's just think of some of the things that we'd really like to do. Whatever that looks like, what would that look like to you? I put them down. So I'm going to give you a sheet here in a minute that's going to give you a place to do that. You can do that for pages and pages and books and books if you'd like to. Most people haven't done that for a long, long time. I had a couple in class last week, and at the end of our time together, we were summing up how it was for them. She said, you know, I realized that we started with a, a business, and we started with a dream. And that was 10 years ago. And now we just have a job. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we start with a dream, and we end up with just a job. But we don't have to stay there. The next one is vision. Next one down is vision. The idea of this is I've got to put something on this that's tangible. So think about this. An artist decides he wants to build a building. He gets a piece of paper. He begins to sketch it, starts to work it out in his mind. What would it look like? Most of us are visual people. 
what would that kind of tangibly look like for me to do that? Anything that's been created started in some kind of moldable way. Maybe it was clay or it was something else, but before it became a reality, there was some process to bring it to, to, to life. In my world, we've got a, a, something we do here as an exercise as part of that program we were just talking about. This is called the vision board. This is for me personally, my vision board. So what's important to me at the center, my life, my wife, it's important to me that words of integrity, things that, things that mean a lot to me end up showing up on this board so that I would have a place and something that would be exciting to motivate me. The reason that we're talking about this is the things of the heart that motivate us. It's the things of the heart that motivate us. So maybe you've never done that or maybe you've done that before. Did you ever make any progress on it? Was it just an art pro process or did you think, boy, that was kind of fun. Maybe I can use that. Because if you thought I can use that, then you would take it to the next step. The next step is a goal. What would it look like? It's like I'm living in Oklahoma. I want to drive to New York City. Well, that's my goal. That's my end cap. Between here and there, there's going to be a lot of waypoints. There's going to be gas stations and restaurants. Maybe there'll be some hotel stays. Uh, Dave just got back from a long drive. He knows that kind of route. There's not just you don't leave and arrive at the same time. There's a journey that has to take place. So me beginning to reverse engineer from where I want to get to to where I am and put some waypoints out there, that's beginning to create some goals. The next step is for me to say, okay, if I'm going to do the goals, how's that going to work? Okay, I'm going to need a car. Well, what kind of car? Where am I going to find a car? How am I going to get a car? You begin to get the components of what it's going to take me and the strategy to reach that goal, to make it to New York, to make that drive, or whatever it is you're trying to reach for, I'm backing it up with some waypoints so I can check in along the way, and I start strategizing, what am I gonna actually need to do that? Initially, you might say, well, those are really big things, I won't be able to do that. But as you play that in your mind, your heart will enlarge, and what you can do will enlarge. The next step down is a plan. Now I'm gonna actually write it down. What does that look like? What are the steps in this for me to be able to do? What's the daily kind of places that's going to be? What's my plan? Each plan, we use this term in our world called a cookbook. Think about a cookbook. What's in a cookbook? Recipes. And recipes are what? They're ingredients and amounts. Ingredients and amounts. Amounts that you need, amount of time to cook it. Ingredients and amounts. A cookbook for us is simply a set of activities and how often I do those activities. Thinking through my plan, I can break those things I want to do into daily activities. And those are my individual actions that I need to take. Those actions will be filled with behaviors. Those of you that are taking notes, behaviors are not like I behave poorly or behave well in this context. What this is about is my my goals, my plans, my actions. What are my behaviors? Am I doing the behaviors? Regardless of how I feel, if I go out and do these things, I know I can get these results. Not every day, but consistently do these things, I'll get these results. My attitude. How's my outlook? Attitude's about our outlook. Not good attitude, bad attitude, not in this context. If I look out, what's my attitude about the industry that I'm in? Positive, negative, I've seen people with both, and they both have an effect. How about the company that I'm in? If I've got a poor attitude about the company I'm with, how does that affect my, affect my performance? I have a positive attitude. If I don't, I need a different company, or I mean, maybe I need to adjust my attitude. Anybody have something to say there that I hear a little bit? Nope, okay. Good. The last part of the attitude is the this part that's the us. It's it's me. It's my identity. It's my spirit, my mind. It's my body. Quickly, I want to just leave you with this. If I want to take care of my body. What are what are some of the things that you would do? Feed it well. Drink, drink well. Something. Drink water. Drink some water. Yeah, just get get cook. some good rest. Get some good rest. Great. What else? Yeah. Eat some vegetables, for goodness sakes. Yeah. I'm talking to myself. 
get some <laughs> so we get some good food in us we get some water and food we get some rest maybe get a little bit of exercise uh -huh. yep so when we think about it the, the actual care and feeding of a human being is not all that complicated out there is it no. it's just you know what what i feed it what i how i exercise it and how i rest it i want you to think about your mind what are we feeding our minds we feed our minds every day are we putting in the good food? I want to think about rest. How do you rest your mind? You rest your mind. And how do you exercise your mind? And the last idea I want you to think about this is your, we talked about that being your spirit, your mind, and your body, that you, that's your identity. Am I feeding my spirit well? Am I resting? Right? Am I doing those same three things, the care and feeding of a human being. Am I feeding my spirit well? Am I resting? Am I getting some exercise in my spirit? If I'm doing that, I can move forward with this. So here are the exercises, and we're going to go through these pretty quickly for you. Guys, do you have any questions up there before we go through? Anything that's popped up? No, um, no questions. Everyone is hanging on to your every word. I know I am. Look at my scribble. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank Good. you for that. <laughs> All right, so yeah, I'm going to go. Multiple pages, multiple sites. I'm going to take this one here and close this particular tab. Hang with me for one second, guys. And I will open up the other one here. Okay, and. This is the next sheet that we're going to go through, team. And on this one, this is called, I, I affectionately call these my dream sheets. Here's the reason we're doing this. This is the reason it's important to me. You'll have to decide what reasons are important to you. What's inside us that drives us, that motivates us, that empowers us is deeper than what we intellectually think we want to plan for. Intellectual plans will go by the wayside because we'll get tired. Our bodies will get weary. It's difficult. We'll give up unless there's fuel that transcends that. Fuel that transcends that are those things that we are impassioned about. You know, I'd run in front of a truck for my wife or my children. I would care for those that are around me. I want to lead men to freedom from the things that have entrapped them. What are the things that empower and guide you? What are those dreams that you want to see in your life? Who do you want to be? What do you want to do? What do you want to have? What do you want to accomplish? What do you want to be known for? That's a palette for my dreams. And taking a moment to go into that space, that big canvas that God's giving you, and begin to dream, what does it really look like to be this person that God's created me to be? You've got a few lines here, and you can do this in your journal. You can do this anywhere. But write down, what does it look like for my professional dreams? What do I really want? And then down below, there's a little place here that says personal dreams. And I'll tell you, this seems like a small amount of space compared to all the dreams that we can have. But for a lot of people, this is a challenge, and it takes some time. What I want to encourage you to do is just start writing things down. You can cross them out later. This is blue sky. There's no penalty. If you decide to change your mind, I don't really want that. I thought I wanted it, but I don't. That happens all the time. We adjust our course. Just like a sailboat can't just sail for a particular item. The wind's blowing, the current's moving, the waves are hitting. You've got to continually adjust to reach your destination. We adjust these. We commit to the ones that God's impassioned us for, but we adjust them. The next page is a fabulous exercise in getting these places in our minds that we're probably not in touch with as much as we'd like to be and thinking about this differently. So I want you to imagine, for just one second for me here, close your eyes. I want you to think of your age 10 years from now. 10 years from now, put yourself out in the future 10 years from now, how old are you? And now looking back on your life, Looking back on the last 10 years from that age, in my life, I'll be 68. Looking back, what are the things that have transpired over those 10 years? Well, take a look here. Here's some of the questions I want you to take some time to think about. 
describing the future the way you see it from this side or looking back. It's really a little bit of both. So you write the date, today's date in there, because this is a document that you're going to want to hang on to. You say in 10 years from now, this is my age and my occupation is exactly what you want it to be 10 years from now. It's exactly what you want it to be. And my specific responsibilities are I'm working four hours a day in my work. and I was working 10 hours a day to help the people in my life have better lives or whatever that is for you, whatever excites you and gets you going. What does it look like? My family, uh, me or my family, our approximate annual income is whatever that is for you. What is that hope, that dream, that desire that fits who you are? The next one is my most important personal possession. What is it that you have that you like? You got a truck, a boat, or, you know, those are typical things. Maybe it's a flute. Maybe it is your home. Uh, maybe it's a shirt that you were given by somebody. What are the most important possessions to you? Of my experiences in the last few years, the most pleasurable were. This is a really important one. To think about those things where you have the most satisfaction, that spiritual, physical, mental, emotional connection to it all. What are those places? Because those are the ones that we'll run after. Those are the ones that we will be like a lion in our focus and are chasing them down for. And then number eight down there says, of my experience in the last few years, the ones that gave me the greatest sense of accomplishment. Greatest sense of accomplishment. A couple of more questions here at the bottom. In the last few years, several dramatic things have happened in my business, in my community. Again, we're just imagining this now, looking back in the past. They've interested me. Below is a summary of the highlights, including the description of how I was involved in these events. What I did for my city, what I did for my school, what I did for my church, what I did for the people I found who were homeless. What happened in my life that I look back to and this is what it looked like. And the last is, as you review that, what's the thing that stands out most to you? We're going to roll through. We're getting near the end here. and We'll take some questions if you guys have those things. One more place here to just kind of highlight you and get this juice going inside of you that says, I need to do this. I need to take some steps. I need to do a dream board. And then I need to break it down to what the actions are for me to be successful and move forward. So I need to kind of know who I am. Finding that thing that's the greatest sense of accomplishment for you. What is that in your life? I put down a couple of things and it just didn't seem right. And then last year I was sailing in Southern California with a group of folks who were recovering um, addicts of different types of things. And these were people who were all from Oklahoma, never been on the water. It's a totally new experience. It's a pretty big boat, about a 45 foot boat. So I've got a bunch of rookie sailors that don't know what to do. I give everybody a job. We do worship, we go through, we learn about the sea, we learn about life. For me, that's fantastic. Everybody gets back and they don't die. I'm safe. It's a fantastic once in a lifetime experience. My satisfaction on everybody arriving back and having that experience is off the charts. What is that for you? What is yours? The least sense of accomplishment. What do you really just not like? What are your personal strengths? Where do you need some development? Last couple questions. You had just one hour, just an hour. You could do whatever you want. What would you do? If you had a day, what would it be if you had a day? If you had a week, you could do anything you want, what would it be? What would your heart's desire be? If you had a year to do whatever you wanted to, what would that be? We're breaking some ground right here. And the last question here at the bottom, what are the things that I want to do that I think I'll never be able to do? It's huge. What are those things? Because that's that self-limiting behavior. Maybe there's some things you can't do, but more often than not, we, our fears fail, our, our dreams fail for fear, not for anything else. So think about all the steps between dreams and that plan at the bottom. I realized the first time I heard this system, sequenced system of how to turn your dreams into reality that my son would come to me as a young boy 10 11 12 said dad i've got this great idea i got this really cool dream and he was my artist he plays all the instruments very artistic and say dad i got a dream because i'm wired that way i say that's fantastic son what's the plan 
What's the plan? Most of us, that's about all you need to jam your circuits and stop trying. Don't squash your dreams. Go back into that playground. Play in that area where God's given you the opportunity to grow and to reveal and to turn those things into reality by using this little system that we've shared. Any thoughts, team? Wow, yes. that was good. That was really good. I have a couple things. Um, a lot of the uh, parts of the exercise really uh, worked around the area of imagination, and it's something that we've kind of lost as adults. Can you um, go ahead and maybe add a little bit more color to the canvas about the importance of imagination? We know Tesla, the inventor, a lot of, um, for those maybe who know or don't know, um, he actually played in his mind space so much that before he even put pen, pen down, he already had it all worked out in his mind. And even, I think yeah. it was Einstein who said, uh, imagination is more important than intellect. <laughs> so it seems like you're, a lot of what you were saying was just like really tapping into the gift that God gave us of imagination. Yeah. If I can, how are we doing for time? Can I share a two minute illustration with you guys? Yes. <clears throat> Anyone that has a question, a good time to type it in the chat right now. I'm going to pop this up on the board here. If you'll help me out a little bit, Dave, and give me some screen size. I'm going to show you guys uh, in my not great drawing, but I want you to get an idea here. This, uh, this is uh, Ellie the Elephant. And upon Ellie is a rider. I want you to imagine in India a young boy riding an elephant. Excuse my drawing, but I want you to think about this. A tiny little boy, 80 pounds, on top of this several ton elephant, pulling these large logs, doing incredible work, building roads in India, guided by this tiny child. If that elephant gets spooked, if something happens to that elephant, something jumps out, is there anything that that child can do to hold the elephant back. There's not. It's not possible. It doesn't have the strength. I want to make an illustration for you. We have something inside of us akin to the power of this elephant, and that is that emotional heart of ours. That is the strength of the human drive, character, capability, for good and for bad. That's the power. This rider here, that's the prefrontal cortex that sits right here. That's the CEO of the mind that takes our thoughts and allows us to focus them and to accomplish something. And our life is kind of like this little V here, this path. If there's something out here that spooks the elephant, nothing anybody does is going to be able to control that elephant. Sometimes in our lives, that's exactly what happens with our emotions. They run away from us. They control us. They're in power. But as a writer, if I do a good job here, clearing things away from the path, keep things from spooking the elephant, the power of that elephant can do so much. When we engage the elephant, when we engage our dreams, that's when we see the change. Wow. That that's, was awesome. Yes. Excellent illustration. Yes. Um, Not the great I Elephant, I do but. Add, um, one more thing to add to that, um, just because they were talking about dreams, how much time do you recommend people at least start to start dream? What I tell my clients is I, I call it the dream into it exercise, which is really similar to what you were you were talking about. So mm. what would you recommend um, for people to dream into at least the beginning as they're writing these things out um, that they should play in their mind space? Uh, I love that concept. And I, I'd love to hear what you think about that. What, what's your thoughts on that, Raquel? Um, what I tell my clients is to set the time, a timer for 20 minutes um, and to start with 20 minutes a day and then increase it because you can actually do it with a mix of prayer and meditation. But to at least start, you know, if they can't do the 20 minutes, you start the timer for a minimum of five with the intent of having 20 minutes of dreaming into it. Because what happens is that after six seconds of thinking of something, your brain is a big drug dealer and it starts to secrete chemicals or hormones in line with those thoughts because it's trying to bring you into alignment. 
And so the more you dream into it, the more your, your, your brain starts to secrete these chemicals, these hormones, and then you start really um, thinking about what God gave you and then you, that'll make you excited, which would then help you in your spiritual walk. It all goes together. It'll start to align you from the inside out, your spirit, your soul, and your body, because it is, you know, that's what God tells us that it is, um, you, uh, your, you will prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. It is an exact equation. Your soul is your mind, your will, and emotions. And until you can activate that space and until you can dream into it, until you start getting excited, you can even see like right now, like, whoo, you know, it, uh, you can, you can actually think yourself happy. You can actually, if you're having a really down day and you're low energy and you can't seem to even do the worksheet, start to dream into those things that brought you here and then just start talking out loud like those exercises that he gave us if you start talking saying it out loud you start thinking about it you start dreaming about it so give yourself space five minutes up to at least 20 minutes a day where you can dream into it um, and the more you dream into it the more you'll start daydreaming about it and those while you're doing riding your car, you're, you're on the train, your mind wanders, it starts wandering into the dream. And the more you walk in your dream, the more you'll be able to walk walk in your dream, in the reality. Well, there's a, you said it better than that. There's a good, there's a good preview for uh, fourth Monday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fourth Monday in September, you're gonna hear more from yeah. Raquel. That was great, Raquel. David, that was excellent. Any closing was thoughts you wanna, yeah. you wanna leave people with? You know, only this, David, and maybe we can send something out for those that want to request it from you. Um, we've got a whole library of stuff that's available for free. So so there's somebody out there who really, they've got a passion to grow. You want the tools to grow with, things that are practical. The whole world spends a lot of time on what you're supposed to do. Very little on how. There's just not a lot on how. We spend our days working on the how part instead of just the what part. Um, you so know, I'm not sure what you just what you just proposed there. So can you can you define that? that? Um, it, I'd be happy to send you a link so that anybody in your folks that want to respond back to you can have free access for a year to a whole library of learning materials that'll help on that process of how to grow. And uh, if somebody was interested in Sandler training, would they contact you uh, in Oklahoma City? Would they contact somebody locally? What what would you suggest? Certainly, there's Sandler trainers all over the United States, but if you're in the Oklahoma area, this is the Sandler trainer. We're in the Oklahoma metro area. The number here is 405-844-1700. Hey, uh, let me give you the screen right on your board. <laughs> Ellie, you. Ellie, Ellie will share. Ellie will share. <laughs> all right, area code 4058. Four four seventeen hundred. And my name is David. So, if somebody wanted to know more about Sandler training, they could contact you then there too. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So we have people from all over the country that use our services remotely. They use it online, but most of our clients want the face-to-face -face transformation that happens from being in a class where you can. It's like getting out on the football field and running the drills. It's not just somebody telling you. We're going to actually get in the game and play it before you have to get out on the field and do it in real life. All right. All righty. Raquel, closing thoughts? No, I'm just really excited about uh, this is a great training. I'm going to have to watch the replay. I took a lot of notes, but, you know, there's always things you miss. And there were some great one-liners. And I was like, no, I can't type it fast enough already. Fast enough, I'll have to go ahead and read it. And I want to encourage you guys, don't forget for next week, Monday, even though it's Labor Day, we will be here. David and I will be here, and we're going to be going um, over like this amazing business breakthrough. So invite your friends. Now that you've had a taste of a full month of the amazing people that David has brought together in this tapestry of people from all over the world, all different disciplines, um, we want to make sure to expand this. So if you would be so kind as to when he yeah. posts these things, like it, comment, Share it because the more you do that on social media, the more the algorithms from those different uh, social media platforms will share it as well. So share it everywhere that you're on in social media when this stuff there comes up. Say, this is a great teaching. You have to watch this teaching and then you get involved. It's absolutely free. It is our love gift, our love bomb to you to share our gifts and talents. Um, we just ask that you get involved and that you help us grow this because we want to minister to more people.
There you go. Okay. Fantastic. Well, David, thank you so very much. Raquel, thank you. And You're again, welcome. we'll be back here next Monday night. And for those that are interested, every Tuesday night, we are on YouTube Live. And I'm in a series right now that kind of parallels this on meditation and confession mm -hmm. and uh, the importance, really, of having a vision and visualizing. So tomorrow night, that's at 8 o'clock every Tuesday night. Just go to uh, Living Supernaturally on YouTube. Just go to, go to YouTube and type in Living Supernaturally. Uh, we'll come up number one. And uh, every Tuesday night, 8 o'clock Central Time. So, again, David, thank you. Raquel, thank you. Everyone you have doing? yourself a great blessed sure. week. And uh, we'll see we're back here next Monday. See you next Monday, guys. Have Thank a good one. Bye. Bye now.